Good afternoon and welcome today to uh, our time to be able to honor the life and uh, the service of uh, Jaretta Davis, who uh, this last Saturday, September 5th, went home to be with the Lord. The Lord reached out his hand and, and took her, and uh, in a moment she got a chance to stand on the other side and be with her Savior. Jaretta was born April 15th, 1936, in Davidson County to Willie Bain Swicegood and Ella May Walser Swicegood. She was a retired teacher with Midway Daycare. She served in many capacities and was an active member of our church. I know uh, what has already been uh, said to me from so many who've expressed just uh, their condolences and expressed just how much they loved uh, Jaretta, how much they loved seeing Jaretta and Bob always together and, and what that meant to them. And so today we want to be able to celebrate and honor uh, her memory, and we also want to be able to celebrate and honor the gospel of Jesus Christ that she cherished and lived out. Won't you go to the Lord in prayer with me today as we begin? Father, we just thank you for who you are and what it means for us that Jesus Christ has conquered death. We just ask today that you would comfort your people with the hope that is in you, uh, that you would comfort us with what it means to know uh, that Jaretta has been healed completely in a way that she never was able to experience on this side and none of us were ever, are ever able to experience until uh, we are, uh, are with you finally. And so God, we just ask today that you would bless this service, uh, that you would just be with us and that you would, uh, that you would just remind us of uh, the hope and the joy that is in you and what you have prepared. And so for uh, the family and for others of us who are grieving her loss today, we just ask that you would give your strength and your peace and uh, that you would allow all of us to celebrate who uh, Jaretta was, what she uh, did for so many of us, and what it means to hope in, uh, in where she is now and what that means for us. We thank you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. We've had a little bit of a change in plans at, at the last minute, and so I would invite you to open up your hymnals. Uh, we're going to turn to uh, a page where we're going to sing congregationally because he lives. And since this is a last minute, Thelma, if you'd like to play along, we'd love to have you. And if not, we'll see what we can do, just like the pioneers did before we, anybody had an organ. Because he lives... Hymn number 407, hymn number 407, Because He Lives. God sent His Son, they called Him Jesus, He came to love, heal and forgive, He lived and died to buy my pardon an empty grave is there to prove my Savior lives because he lives because he lives I can face tomorrow because he lives all fear is gone because I know he holds the future and life is worth the living just because he lives the second verse how sweet how sweet to hold a newborn baby and feel the pride and joy he gives. But greater still, but greater still, the calm assurance this child can face uncertain days because he lives because he lives 
I can face tomorrow because he lives. All fear is gone because I know Life is worth a living just because he lives. And the last verse. And then one day I'll cross the river. I'll fight life's final war with pain. And then as death gives way to victory, I'll see the lights of glory and I'll know He lives because He lives, because He lives. I can face tomorrow because he lives all fear is gone because I know because I know he holds the future and life is worth the living just because he Good afternoon also. It's a privilege to be back here at the church I pastored for some 20 years to help out in the service to remember one of the great saints of this church, uh, Joretta Davis. And I have many fond memories of her, as you can imagine, during that length of time. And I'll be glad to share some of those with you. I told somebody if, if I could had the time, I could, we could be here for a long time. I could tell you all kinds of things about Joretta. Maybe you already know, maybe you don't know, but I had a lot of good experiences with Joretta. My text today is coming from Romans chapter 8, verses 31 through 39. What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who is against us? He who did not spare his own son, but delivered him over for us all, how will he not also with him freely give us all things? Who will bring a charge against God's elect? God is the one who justifies. Who is the one who condemns? Christ Jesus is he who died. Yes, rather, who was raised, who is at the right hand of God, who also intercedes for us. Who will separate us from the love of Christ? Will tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? Just as it is written, for your sake, we are being put to death all day long. We were considered as sheep to be slaughtered. But in all these things, we overwhelmingly conquer through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing will be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. When I think of Joretta Davis, I think of a lady who was very kind and considerate. Those two words just popped out as soon as I started thinking about what I would say today. Kind and considerate. A couple of early experiences. Many years ago, uh, the church had bought a new bus, and uh, this was something my wife shared with me. Uh, everybody was excited about going off. It's a senior citizen's trip. Bob and Jared know all about that. Because senior citizens get in the bus. And this was a new bus. Everybody was excited about being on this new bus. But as so often happens here, we have so many senior saints, they fill up the bus. 
So we've got to have another vehicle. So we had a, a small bus, I think maybe even a van back then. This is going back many, several, 10, 15 years ago. I don't, but anyway, uh, my wife had signed up to go and her mother who lived in Boone, she's dead now, but she drove all the way down here. So the two of them could go on this trip. They were going up to, I think it was Winston for a Bill Gaither concert. Well, you know, that's really going to bring the people out. And my wife and her mother got here late. The bus was already filled up. People were having to go onto the van or the small bus, I don't remember. But anyway, lo and behold, uh, Kathy had mentioned to somebody how her mother had come all the way down from Boone wanting to go to this trip and wanted to see, try out the new bus. Well, guess who it was that volunteered to leave their seats on the new bus and get in that old bus, Bob and Joretta. That was very, very considerate and uh, something that you know, touched my heart uh, when my wife expressed that to me. Years later, another experience happened with my wife, Kathy, and her mother. Uh, they had come here for a special event here at the church. It might have been a ladies' event, hospitality event. I'm not sure all the details. But Joretta was at the table, and Kathy was talking to Joretta about her mother having these hearing problems and how they were looking into hearing aids and things like that. And Joretta just brought out, well, it was something they had done for Bob. She knew where you could get hearing aids for free. And my wife looked into that, and sure enough, we got those. Had to go through all the paperwork, but we got that. But there's Joretta again coming through. Yeah, she, she came through once again and helped us out. She was just that kind of person. She liked to be involved with people. She, she just wanted to do what she could to help people out. Another thing that stands out in my mind, I'm not sure why, because this was so many years ago. Again, it goes back to uh, my wife when her father died in 2002. Uh, the funeral was on a Sunday afternoon and I had left the family up in Boone uh, so I could come back here to preach on Sunday morning. Then I was going to leave just as soon as the service was over to go back up the mountain for the funeral. Uh, but Joretta was sitting back there in the back where her and Bob normally sat. And I was walking up the aisle before the service and she called my name out and wanted to talk to me. And I, I don't know why, but I just remember this so well. Over 18 years later, she wanted to know about the whole thing with Kathy's father. What happened? How old was he? What was going on? And she was very interested. And for, that just really stood out and has stood out in my mind all these years. But that's the kind of person uh, Joretta was. She wanted to know what was going on. She cared uh, about people. And uh, that brings me up to uh, another thing about them was, I don't know how many times over the years, going to the hospitals, and I would go in there, especially if somebody was having surgery, and I'd go to be with the family uh, to wait out you know, the surgery and get the report from the doctor. And lo and behold, I don't know how many times I'd go to the hospital and there would be Bob and Joretta sitting there with the family. And we would have some of the best conversations because you never know how long you're going to have to wait for a surgery to be over. But they were that kind of people. They wanted to be there and help in any way they could. Now, Wednesday night. Boy, this is another thing that stands out. Wednesday night. Bob and Joretta, so faithful. You know, a lot of people don't come to church on Wednesday night. Uh, that's, this was back before COVID, of course, when you know, a lot of things have changed. But they were here. Back when we had Sunday night services, they were here. So it was Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night. But I remember so many times, Joretta, when we, were at, we would take prayer requests, her hand would go up and I'd recognize her and she would have prayer requests to share with us. Um, she kept me informed about a lot of things that I really appreciated. I need informants <laughs> in the ministry. I need people to let me know what's going on because sometimes I don't know and I don't want to be left uh, in the dark. Uh, sometimes she would call me 
in the office here and give me an update. Or she would want to know about somebody in the church if I knew something about how they were doing and, and so forth. She wanted to be aware of what was going on. So I, I appreciated that. Um, Joretta loved her family. It was so obvious she cared for y'all. Man, she loved y'all. I mean, if there was anything going on with you that was of concern, she wanted people praying about it. And she did this. I mean, some of your names were on our prayer list for a good while. <laughs> for whatever reason, she would keep us informed about different things that were, were going on. Uh, but she loved y'all. I mean, if it was something about Bob, the boys, the, the grandchildren, uh, the, or whatever, just, just she, she would let us know what was going on. So many times when they were leaving after church on Sunday morning, she would fill me in real quick about some, something going on in the family that she wanted me uh, to be aware of. So again, I, I appreciated that. Um, she loved the Swicegood family. Oh, boy, she, she talked about that family that, that, uh, that she was born into many years ago. And, uh, and one of the things I always remember, this is going back many years ago. I had, I had not been here that long. I came here in 1999. So it was probably within a year or two after that. I preached a sermon here, and I mentioned something about my own background, how I was the youngest of four children. And I was a total surprise to my parents. They were not expecting any more babies. So I was, I was a big surprise. They didn't have any room for me in the house. I mean, they had no plans for another baby. And, but I came along, so I'm glad I did. But, uh, but it was a surprise. Boy, Joretta, she caught that. And I mean, you should have heard what she had to say to me after the service that morning. She said, I can top that. Said, I was the youngest of 10. And I was not expected. <laughs> I think she even said her parents were in their 40s or early 40s, something like that. My parents were in their late 30s when I was born. But she said, I think she's, she was a whole lot younger. In fact, we've only got one of those siblings still left, and she's here today. And she's probably, you're in your 90s? That's what I thought. Because uh, she was, Joretta was 84. So, again, big gap there. So she... She would bring that up more than once about how we were both the une unexpected babies in our families. So I would just, that's another one of those things that just really tickled my, my fancy. Uh, her birthday. I didn't do this often, but I always tried to, uh, but sometimes when seniors had their birthdays, I sort of pick on them. And I couldn't help but take advantage of her birthday. It was April 15th, and you know what that is. And sometimes I'd call Joretta and I asked her if she'd done her taxes yet. You know, and sometimes she was prepared for that and sometimes. And I didn't do that every year, but just once in a while I tried to try to rub that in. But she had a great sense of humor. I always loved Joretta, her sense of humor and laughing, and she had a big smile. And that meant a lot to me. Also, besides her family, she loved her church. Like I said, she was faithful here about all the time when health allowed. I know so many times she came into this church in a wheelchair. Bob was pushing her, or somebody else was attending to her. But she wanted to be here, if at all possible. She was so faithful to this church. Uh, she was definitely one of the foundations here of this church. Her and Bob, so faithful over the years. So there's no question about her devotion to this church, her Sunday school class, you know, just, she just loved being here. And of course, lastly, I just want to point out that besides loving her family and loving the church, she loved the head of the church. And by the head, of course, I mean our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Joretta is not in heaven because she was a good person, because she did a lot of good things, even though she did. She knew just like hopefully all of us or most of us here know, you go to heaven because of your faith 
in Jesus Christ. And she had a strong faith in the Lord. She knew him personally. And that's why I can say I have the greatest assurance that Joretta Davis is in heaven because she knew Jesus Christ. And that's why I read this passage that assures us that nothing, nothing can separate us from the love of Christ. Not, not life, not death, no, no peril we go through. You know, when I got word that Joretta had died, as so often happens when I get those words, I don't cry. I say, praise the Lord. I celebrate. Joretta had lived a long life. She had suffered so much over these years. We all saw her coming to church so much, and you know she was not feeling well. But she was here so much. I'm so glad she's not suffering anymore. She went through a lot. And the scriptures assure us that there's nothing, nothing in the universe that can separate us from the love of Christ. She knew that love. She knew he died on the cross for her sins. She gave her life to Christ. And she's reaping the benefits of that now more than ever. That love of Christ that keeps us connected and united with him both now and forevermore. Rejoice in the life of Joretta Davis. Celebrate those precious memories that you have of her. And be an example in your life that she can be proud of you the way you're living. May God bless you. Oh, Lord, my God, when I in awesome wonder consider all the worlds thy hands have made, I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder, thy power throughout the universe displayed. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art. And when I think that God, his Son not sparing, sent him to die, I scarce can take it in. That on the cross, my burden gladly bearing, he bled and died to take away my sin. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art. When Christ shall come with shouts of acclamation and take me home, what joy shall fill my heart. Then I shall bow in humble adoration and there proclaim, my God, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee, how great thou art, 
how great thou art then sings my soul my savior god to thee how great thou art how great thou art i'd like to take a moment just to read some thoughts from uh, the sunday school class that joretta belonged to this is from miss carolyn Today we celebrate Joretta's earthly life and remember the love, joy, and kindness she brought not only to her family, but her many friends and acquaintances for years when she was able. She and Bob were faithful to visit sick in the home or in hospital, those who were grieving and those who had visited our church. Health problems prevented her from enjoying so many daily pleasures that we take for granted, but with Bob's devoted assistance, she attended as many functions as possible. Today we can be assured in knowing she will no longer know sickness and pain. We shed tears of sadness as we say goodbye to another friend and loved one, but we know that she is at home with the Lord that she served all her life. We get a chance to honor, as uh, Pastor Blair mentioned already, Joretta's life and her faith. Uh, I'd like to today uh, speak out of Psalm 139, which is something that Joretta had left as uh, one of the passages she would love for us to be able to emphasize during her funeral. Uh, it was so wonderful to sit down with the family yesterday and have so much that had already been written out by Joretta in different areas of what she uh, was hoping for with her, her funeral. That's a tremendous blessing. Uh, and so if you, uh, it, it, all of us in here, that's a wonderful thing to get to leave to folks to say, uh, well, you know, instead of scratching our heads and saying, I don't know which passage, uh, you know, mom might like, that, that that gives us a chance. And it's a wonderful blessing to look at a passage of scripture that is not typically what we think of as a funeral passage. Uh, Psalm 139, I don't know if I've ever spoken out of that for a funeral, but uh, even though there's wonderful funeral passages that we grow familiar with as we go to, to funerals, I don't know that this is one, but I was so excited to get to speak from this passage today. Uh, many things that have been shared already, I will just echo. I know the family had mentioned some things that, uh, that they would love for me to make sure are, are mentioned. Uh, Joretta had a tremendous love of children, not only in her family, her children and grandchildren, but also in the time that she uh, did ministry along with Bob at our church. Uh, she was involved in our church when this building didn't exist and we were up the road and so she was involved with Bob all the way from little children up through teenagers and visitation and other things that went on, just a lot of different areas uh, through the years that she had an equal and unconditional love of both Craig and Tony, uh, that I don't know how many times they may have fought with each other about who mom loved best through the years, but they knew when they came back to it, uh, they couldn't honestly say that she loved one more than the other, that she, she loved everyone. Uh, that she had a love of music and playing the organ and the piano, uh, that in her early years at uh, Shiloh Methodist and then later on, even at our church, uh, many years ago, she was involved in that way. She was a godly wife and a mother. She loved to cook, and she uh, did a very good job of that. She loved her family very much. Uh, you can tell that whenever you sit down with that family and they're able to speak about Joretta and uh, the, not only the love they have for one another, but how Joretta helped to tie all that together. She loved to decorate, especially at Christmas. Uh, she loved to take trips with friends. Uh, she loved uh, Bob, and you never saw one without the other. Uh, I spoke on Ephesians chapter 5, what many think of as a wedding passage, uh, uh, this last Sunday with uh, husbands loving their wives and wives submitting to their husbands and just this idea of what God's called us to in marriage. And I had several people come up to me after I spoke on that of what it meant to be a godly wife or a godly husband. And they said, you know, I just couldn't help but think of Bob and Joretta as we were walking through that. Uh, a husband who sacrificially loved his wife and gave up some things in order to be able to care for her and wouldn't have had it any other way. And a wife who loved and looked to her husband and, and wanted the best for you as well, Bob. I know uh, you would echo that. That they still held hands after 66 years of marriage. Bob once joked that was because they're each holding each other up. Uh, but uh, 
but they still had a, a love and devotion to each other. They had the, uh, the very important uh, understanding that you're never to go to bed uh, with your spouse mad at you. And, uh, and so do what you can uh, to do that. I've found in my marriage, sometimes you just need to go to bed and work on it in the morning. But y'all might have been able to solve everything before you, you went to bed that night. Psalm 139 is a passage that is one of my favorite psalms. It's one of the most beautiful psalms, and it has so many applications uh, in our life. I'd like to apply this specifically to Jaretta, and I'd like to just read bits and pieces of this as we move through the psalm. It's a little bit lengthy, and I think it might be uh, more beneficial to us that way. But if you have your Bibles, we're going to begin in Psalm 139, verse 1. And this is what David, the psalmist, wrote. O Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know when I sit down, when I rise up, you discern my thoughts from afar, you search out my path and my lying down and are acquainted with all my ways. Even before a word is on my tongue, behold, O Lord, you know it all together. The psalm begins with a reminder that God knows us through and through, that nothing escapes his sight, uh, that there is no time in our lives where we are beyond uh, his understanding and his knowledge. Jonah thought he could run away from the Lord and the Lord's will and found out the hard way that was not the case. David seems to understand this ahead of time, that there's nowhere you can go and, and from wherever uh, you know, the Lord might be with us, that he knows us through and through. He has perceived everything uh, from the very beginning. And even in knowing fully who we are, he has still loved us enough to extend the offer of salvation to us. That God knows us through and through. We can't help but look at that and be reminded of the fact that in the, uh, the important things in our life, the things that seem important and the things that seem menial and mundane, God is in control and working and knowing even in all those things. Many years ago, there was a young boy who went to Lexington Fairgrounds and decided to play the game where you swing the hammer and you hit the bell and see how high you can get it to go up and whether you win. Well, as this young boy was swinging that hammer, he was impressing so many people around him, even a young lady who had brought another date to the fair. And as uh, somebody leaned over and said to this lady, Jaretta, would you like to date that boy? She said, well, he's swinging that hammer awful good. I think I would like to get uh, his information and, and maybe we could meet together. And before long, even on their first date, the old boyfriend tried to show up, but he didn't stay too long, thankfully. But uh, as time went on, uh, Bob and Jaretta were brought together by something that seemed so meaningless, swinging a hammer at the fair. I'm sure it was impressive, Bob. I'm not trying to say it wasn't. <laughs> But I don't know how many movies go back to a hammer swinging at a fair that brought the romantic you know, couple together. Even in the everyday and the mundane, as the song we sometimes sing here, it reminds us God's in control of those things as well. That nothing escapes his sight and his will and his direction. God knows each one of us through and through. Verses 5 and 6 in Psalm 139, David says, You hem me in, behind and before. And lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is high. I cannot attain it. David is reminded of God's protection. You hem me in behind and before. That God is in the business of surrounding his people and protecting them. Uh, Jaretta has been able to experience that numerous times in recent years, trusting in the protection of God, knowing that this was the day that was... Uh, uh, appointed for her to be able to go home and all along the difficult road that was there she saw God's protection I'm sure in many ways uh, I'm sure there were many nights where uh, where Jaretta and Bob were praying for God's protection in the midst of various things and the psalmist recognizes that all of us in our life when we're followers of the Lord when we on this side of the cross have believed in Jesus Christ as our Savior that God is in the business of hemming us in and protecting us behind and before and that that knowledge is wonderful. Verse 7, the psalmist says, Where shall I go from your spirit? Where shall I flee from your presence? If I ascend to heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in Sheol, you are there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there your hand shall lead me and your right hand shall hold me. If I say, Surely the darkness shall cover me and the light about me be night, 
Even the darkness is not dark to you. The night is bright as the day, for darkness is as light with you. The psalmist recognized that God's presence was always with him, that God never left him. That beautiful promise from Scripture that God says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. The words echoed by Jesus as well. This idea that we are never left by our Heavenly Father. And we find that great truth as well. I, I couldn't help but, as I've mentioned, uh, be reminded as our Heavenly Father never leaves us. There are so many who said, you never saw Bob without Jaretta, that the two of them were always together. At their best moments and at their worst moments, at the moments where uh, perhaps it was easy and other times where it was more difficult. Uh, each of them in these, these last few years have been going through more and even in that they remained together. The family told me a wonderful story about last Thanksgiving where uh, Jaretta really just wanted to be able to share a lot of things with her family and just poured her heart out to the family there before they, they were just waiting to be able to pray and eat. And she was just uh, you know, sharing with each one of them and just very meaningful uh, words for them and, and it was a very moving and wonderful time. Uh, Bob who was right there for the whole event had, had uh, I think either not had his hearing aid or had it turned down and as he looked around and Jaretta got done he said well I don't know what that was all about but let's eat I'm hungry and uh, <laughs> just a that's a classic understanding of what it means to be together with people and to, to walk that road together and in, in, in all that Jaretta just couldn't help but shake her head and smile and let's all sit down and eat in a beautiful moment uh, that for the highs and lows and for the uh, the good and bad Bob and Jaretta uh, walked that path together and have been a great example we see in that an even greater understanding that the Lord Jesus never leaves us uh, that there's nowhere we can go where he is not accessible to us that there's nowhere uh, that we can find ourselves where his power his presence uh, the hope that is in him uh, is unknown to us. The psalmist continues in verse 13, You formed my inward parts. You knitted me together in my mother's womb. I praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works. My soul knows it very well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was being made in secret, intricately woven in the depths of the earth. Your eyes saw my unformed substance, and in your book were written every one of them, the days that were formed for me when as yet there was none of them. That God had a design. As you shared, uh, Pastor Blair, I did not know that she was the unexpected uh, and, and last of, of ten. And uh, Nora, I don't think I knew that about you either, uh, that you were a surprise as well. And so uh, we see that. My favorite story about uh, Jaretta's birth is one she told me after a Wednesday night study one time. And that was this, that Jaretta was also born premature. And so in those days, there wasn't as much care that could be given. And so uh, her parents came up with a special scheme where they could turn the oven on as low as they could possibly get it and set her in there with just a little bit, you know, the door open so it didn't get too warm. And they'd leave her in there, and every 10 minutes they'd turn her over. No, I'm just kidding. They... <laughs> but... <laughs> But I just loved that when she told me that. I, I know I've heard various people here give me a glimpse into what it was like in the past, but Jaretta literally got put in the oven uh, to be able to, I, I imagine Hansel and Gretel was not as scary of a story to her as to the rest of us. Uh, that that was her experience, that God knew exactly what he was doing when he ordained that Jaretta was going to be born. When he knit her together in the inward parts that no one else could see, as the psalmist says here. He had designed even then in that moment the days that Jaretta would walk. He knew then that we would be here today, and he knew the celebration we would be able to have for the life that she lived, and all of us being able to say we are thankful also that God had that plan for a surprise uh, and for a way to be made, even if it involved an oven, that she would be able to grow and uh, to flourish, uh, flourish and to follow her Lord. Verse 17. The psalmist continues, How precious to me are your thoughts, O God! How vast is the sum of them! If I would count them, they are more than the sand. I awake, and I am still with you. The psalmist recognized the worth of God. And Bob and Jaretta recognized the worth of God. That their family is able to give that same testimony, part of the reason they are able to look and to say that there is not only an obligation to serve the Lord, but much more so, all, the obligation only came out of a heart that was responding to the tremendous worth that they found in Jesus Christ. Jaretta lived that out, and 
I know that she and Bob, as I mentioned, served faithfully in our church uh, for years. There were so many ways and so many things we could sit here for a long time and list off all they've done in the midst of our church and various ministries and relationships. It would just take too long. I know for myself one of the things that became so wonderful uh, as I began to teach in here on Wednesday nights this fall, uh, even with all they were facing this year, Bob and Jaretta were so faithful when they could be here uh, to be here and often they would come up afterwards and Jaretta would say it, pretty much the same lines every time she would come up she would just say, that was so good, I got so much out of that. Thank you. We just, Bob and I just enjoyed that. I don't know if Bob told her that, but she just knew she could speak on Bob's behalf and say, we just really, really enjoyed that. Now, I can tell you something from being in ministry for a little while. Uh, I, I've, I've learned this. How you come into a church has more to do with what you get out of it than anything the pastor says. And that was always a testimony to me that when Bob and Jaretta walked in here on Wednesday nights, they wanted to hear from the Lord. And they were interested to learn and to see how God would want to teach them anytime they walked through these doors. But may the same be said for each one of us. Are we willing to understand that the worth of Jesus Christ, the worth of what He's done and what He's revealed, is greater than anything else in our life? And so that becomes the well which we continue to want to come back and continue to drink from. I saw that evidenced in Jaretta's life, and I was so thankful she understood the worth of the Lord. We come then to a very interesting part of this psalm. Verse 19, the psalmist continues, Oh, that you would slay the wicked, O God. O oh, men of blood, depart from me. They speak against you with malicious intent. Your enemies take your name in vain. Do I not hate those who hate you, O oh Lord? Do I not loathe those who rise up against you? I hate them with complete hatred. I count them my enemies. You know, the psalmist was actually, or the psalms themselves were a hymnal for the Jewish people of that time. And so I don't know what music this was set to, but can you imagine standing and singing and knowing this verse is coming? Everything's been real easy so far, but we're coming to, oh, I just hate these folks who are doing these wicked things. As Baptists, often we like to say, okay, we're going to sing the first, second, and fourth verse, and we're not going to sing the third one. Uh, I imagine there might have been some people turning Baptists over this portion of Psalm 139. You know, we come to this, and it feels like a place we should almost skip over, but I, I want to be able to speak on what I think is important about this psalm. The psalms are tremendous in their honesty. And they're tremendous in the genuineness that comes out in what the psalmist was feeling. And I remember hearing someone say a very valuable uh, thought that I had never considered before, that the psalmist, when they were writing, we sometimes think that they sat down and they began and they wrote all the way to the end and they put their you know, pencil away and that was it. I believe Psalm 139 indicates to us an unfinished song that something happened in between verses 17 in 18 and verses 19 and 20 there's a pause there and as David comes back to these words for whatever reason there's a quick change in tone he's dealing with some things that have made him angry he's dealing with some things that have made him frustrated he sees wickedness and injustice and he, he has a very big problem with that it could be particularly in his life at a time where he even faced threats and he said God why don't you do something about this now I know, and I, I'm, I'm without a doubt, that there have been times over the last few years, particularly for Jaretta, where with all that she's gone through, there had to be some nights where things were really difficult. This family, different ones of them could probably attest times where Jaretta was not feeling as good as we often saw her, that all of us walk through times where our days get hard and our frustrations mount, and we aren't always have, able to have the same attitude that we once had when we walk through things that are really difficult. I know that Jaretta had a lot of reasons that she would have been as justified as any of the rest of us to complain. I never saw that. But I'm sure there were hard days and hard nights and nights of pain and nights of calling out to God saying, I don't know what to do. Please help me do something about this. The New Testament describes this as groaning that we are always in these bodies crying out for something that we will one day experience with our Lord and Savior that we don't experience now. That even the Bible says creation groans, that everything on this side of heaven has been taken down by the fall. 
And so all of it is groaning, and there's these moments where things get really tough. I know that Jaretta had tough days and tough times. And then I think what's wonderful about this psalm as well is that there's one more deep breath to be had. And that's the deep breath that happens in between verse 22 and verse 23. Because the psalm doesn't end with, Oh, vindicate me. Oh, I hate those who do this. Oh, that you would slay the wicked. There's a pause, and I think the, the pen or whatever was being written with was put down for a while. And David came back, and this is how the psalm ends, verse 23. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts. See if there be any grievous way in me, and lead me in the way everlasting. I think Jaretta would want each of us to know, particularly those who are going through something hard today, that there is something glorious in the deep breath that comes after the difficulty and being reminded of the faithfulness of God and His need in our hearts and in our lives. Jaretta had two scripture passages that she had written down, this in Psalm 139 and the other in John 14, which is quite well known to a lot of us that Jesus is telling his disciples, in my Father's house there are many rooms, and if it were not so, I would not have told you, and I go to prepare a place for you so that, uh, that, that you may be where I am someday, and, and I want you to be there. And Thomas, the disciple, pipes up and he says, well, uh, how are we supposed to know how to get there? Where's the path? Where's the road map? What process do we need to go through in order to be able to find this place that you're talking about? How do we get there? What's the way? And Jesus says his famous statement in John 14, 6, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. Jaretta understood this, that a relationship with Jesus Christ is not involvement in a process or a methodology. It is a relationship with a person. The psalmist comes to that same understanding. In the midst of his difficulty, God, why won't you do this? God, I wish you would end this. God, can you ease my suffering here? He comes back and he says, no, Lord, you know what's best. So search me, try me, know me, lead me. The psalm ends with lead me in the way everlasting. Jaretta's getting to experience that now. The everlasting way, and his name is Jesus Christ, the truth and the life as well. She would want that same hope for the rest of us. That your great hope is not in having a scorecard that looks like Jaretta when you come to the end to say, oh, there's all these good things that I did. She knew that wasn't her hope either. But her hope was in knowing her Savior and the fruit of her knowing her Savior and realizing the worth of who he was showed itself in her life to be able to love others. And the, the union between family and church people was just kind of blended, wasn't it? You didn't know where the family stopped and the church started. But she realized that God had called her to love the people around her and to lift up his name in all those areas. Won't you pray with me today? Father, we thank you and we praise you for the chance to celebrate the life of Jaretta Davis. We thank you that she has been set free, she has been healed, uh, and she has been known even now more fully than she was ever known before. So, Lord, for each of us, as we're reminded of your power and your presence and uh, the might of, of who you are and what you've done, I pray that that would call us to Calvary, that that would lead us uh, to a realization of the worth of who you are, and that Jaretta's chief desire for any of us today would be able to know the truth and the worth of our Savior, Jesus Christ. And so, Lord, we just ask all these things and commit these things to you. In the name of Jesus Christ, we ask this. Amen. At this time, I'm going to ask if Wayne and Kate, are you, would you like to sing today? Wonderful. If you'd like to come, we'd love to have you.
sent His Son. They called Him Jesus. He came to love, heal, and forgive. He lived and died to buy my pardon and empty grave is there to prove my Savior lives because he lives I can face tomorrow because he Life is worth the living just because He lives. And then one day I'll cross the river, I'll fight life's He lives, I can face tomorrow, because He lives, all fear is gone, because I know. service will conclude at our cemetery. I want you all to stand.